So there are all kinds of steps that we have uh, implementation. I won't go through them all because uh, you know there we are. We got <laughs> we have each of the core directions. Parish life. So we're looking at, for example. Uh, building up parish pastoral councils. Uh, many of these things a parish can say, well, got it, got it, done, 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 not need it. You know, we already have it. But there might be something on the list which we don't have, in which case, this is what, why I have a checklist. I think that's true for airplanes taking off too, don't they? I think they don't, they, hope, they don't hope the pilots remember to do whatever they're supposed to do with the flaps. You know, they just, I think they have to check it out to be sure it's actually done. So I think we, we have to, we, it's good for us to have this. So this has been, People have been drilling down to get this more particularly. What do we knew for, need for parish vitality over a period? And who needs to do it? Um, and so we have that. Then we have the vocations. For example, starting up a monthly mass for vocations, pr uh, promotion of Eucharistic adoration. Um, where there is Eucharistic adoration, there's a flourishing in vocations of priest and religious life. It's simple, it's obvious. I mean, it's a no-brainer, obviously. Pray to the Lord of the harvest to send laborers into the harvest. That's all Jesus ever said. So there we are. But we also have uh, various ways, promotion of lay ministry and so on. And, and then Catholic outreach, we have very, various ways in which we're developing uh, help for that, evangelization of society, uh, and so on. We're, we're working on those different things. And there's a kind of a, like, what do we need to do next process that's going on in the next steps. A couple of things that are... Um, sort of that relate to the whole diocese that came up in the course of this, this process, uh, relate to how we serve from the pastoral center to the parishes. The parishes is where, this is where the life of the archdiocese is, but we need to give service. This is what the Holy Father is doing in the Vatican. Like the Vatican is not where the church is, the Vatican serves the church. And um, so he's re so arranging the Vatican, the, the Holy See, so that the people out in the, the diocese can get good unity and service. And but what, the, what the Holy See does, what the Holy Father does, is he unites the church and provides that uh, governance for the whole, but it's to help the local ones do that too. So it's sort of the same with the pastoral center. My mission is to help unite the whole diocese, sort of like the conductor of the orchestra, but so that's where the unity comes and so on, but it has to ultimately, the musicians in the orchestra are the ones who are playing the music, not the conductor. So you've got to, we've got to have that whole thing. So to help, what do we need? So we're thinking of four commissions and one office. The difference between a commission and an office is that a commission is somewhat lighter on the ground than an office. A commission is people from around the diocese who are able to work together, like we have this at the center at the Ottawa, at the Canadian Conference of Bishops. They get together and they're able to plan where we should go in particular areas and then give direction for the whole diocese and help the whole diocese move in that direction. And so here are the four, liturgy commission, um, and we already have people at our diocesan office who have training in liturgy. And, I, and one thing, by the way, I'm doing, I'm sending a priest a year over to Rome. Uh, and with this, it's hard to pull priests out of the parish. You know, we need more priests in the parish, but I'm pulling them out so that we can get highly trained people that help the rest of us. And I'm, I'm trying to encourage that training so that when they come back, we've had a, a, one priest has come back with scripture, another one with moral theology, and so they help the rest of us. So this is, so we have some trained liturgists, media, we need to learn how, we have a very fine media department, but we need to know how to communicate, how to tell the story of the faith to the people so they will understand, they will appreciate. This is just one thing we need. Higher Education Commission. We have one of our auxiliary bishops is responsible for education, but we need to get a group of people look to how can we evangelize society through the universities through our contact with that? How can we do that better? Fourth, a social justice commission. Many of our works of social justice are happening already through different things like Catholic charities and uh, different things like that. And of course, all of this is funded regularly through Share Life. That's why Share Life is so important because Great though this is to talk about, you gotta, somebody's gotta pay for, the, for making it happen. And so that's why I really celebrate and encourage people with, with Share Life. But we need to have these different commissions. Social Justice Commission will help us to see how we can be involved in our local area and reach out beyond uh, in the call for social justice. The fifth one is different. It will be an actual office. That's where you have a director, 
a place at the pastoral center, you know, secretary, uh, staff, uh, that kind of thing, to encourage and strengthen family life in all the different ways and to coordinate the work of the many different people working on this throughout the diocese so that they're not duplicating or bumping into one another and all that, but that it's more that we have a consistent way of strengthening the building up and the sense of family life in our, in our diocese. So that's so very, very important. Now, most of this is free. I mean, it just means figuring out how we do this and get people working on different things and working together. Some of it costs money. Uh, I tell you, the cathedral costs money, but some of, it costs, some of it costs money. How are we gonna pay for these chaplaincy people and these uh, people in the universities and the youth ministers and the various things? So much of this is, is simply free. It's just our, but some of it's gonna do that. So you'll be hearing about uh, a campaign to run, raise money called the Family of Faith Campaign, which is a way of um, paying for those portions of this that cost money. Other parts don't, but some do. So you'll be hearing about that, and we're gonna be launching the campaign in May uh, formally. We've already been working with pilot parishes and things, but it'll be working together. So, there we are. There's the plan. <laughs> I mean, you can get it in a brochure form, you get it the standard form, in more detail on our website and in a paper, in I think seven different languages. You get it the brochure form uh, in about 30 languages, uh, although I think we have to work on some of the translations we hear they were <laughs> they need to be improved and you can get it in a nutshell it is care for the gathered reach out to the scattered so there's the pastoral plan rooted in prayer that's the the heart of it and this has been a presentation of it we now are working to sort of get down to the nitty-gritty and uh, you know for over a three-year period uh, and so we're planning on that we're looking at how to help implement this how to use the gifts and talents of, of our community. And we're, this is continuing. This is a work in progress. I mean, you can't constantly be re reshuffling things, but I've always been sort of resistant to the idea of having a big synod or something in the diocese where you get a leather-bound plan or something. I think um, we, we need to, if anything, it, it, it's, it's clear, it's set, it's focused, but it's also adapting constantly to the, and it adapts to the local parish situation because some parishes more this way or that way, depending on where they are. It's up to the local parishioners and the pastor to, to see where, how it needs to be adapted to the local scene. But there needs to be something common to be adapted. So that's the kind of a thing. And it, over time, it, situations shift. This or that becomes more, uh, more needed. And so it needs to be flexible. Uh, and of course, uh, one parish may say, well, we've got most of these things, but one thing we're missing. So let's go on that one. So, you know, it, it's just to help everyone have a consistent vision of what needs to be done. And we'll keep looking at it uh, and um, I keep uh, just simply moving forward. If you know where you're going, you're more likely to get there. We, we need to know where we're going, not just in general, but more clearly. After thought, consultation and prayer, meditation upon the gospel. The Holy Father, I think tomorrow is gonna to be handing out at uh, Mass in St. Peter's, thousands and thousands of little gospels, little gospel of the Acts of the Apostles. We should do that. We should keep it uh, ready, you know, read the gospel. We, we need to be immersed in the message of the Lord and in the person of the Lord. It's not just a message, it's the encounter with Christ. Everything we do needs constantly be rooted in that. That's why spending time before our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament is so important. That's why the Sunday Eucharist is so important. And out of that comes our vision of who we are adapted and situated in the local place where God has put us and changing over time depending on different crises and circumstances that face us. So this is the pastoral plan of the Archdiocese. I, I've thought of giving it some fancy name, but I think, well, why do that? This is the pastoral plan. That's what it is of the Archdiocese. Uh, and it's, uh, it's designed to help us to serve more faithfully uh, and to, to be what God wants us to be. The light of Christ in this world so much in need of it. And to do so not individually only, but together as a family of faith. And to do so as people who know what we're doing and uh, have thought it through and relying uh, on the mercy of God and the, and the grace of God, which is the source of it all, that we then proceed in the brief amount of time God has allotted to us in this world, uh, faithfully, joyfully to do his will. And that we do individually, that we do as a parish community, and that we do as our larger family of faith uh, in this Archdiocese of Toronto. 
So St. Michael the Archangel, pray for us. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.